Come basketball season, you'll see some changes on the Westwood Patriots sidelines. Chad Hewitt has taken over the boys varsity coaching position following Ray Drake's resignation due to family obligations last month. Hewitt has been with the program for the past seven years, spending the last two as the JV coach. And even though it's early, his goal this season is to have the, to have the Patriots make some noise in the mid pen. It's going to be faster and I'm going to have to be up on my A game to uh, be able to keep up with it. We're going to try and put them in situations that uh, will allow us to win. And um, they're going to work hard, they're going to rebound, they're going to run, they're going to play defense. We are definitely going to be play very hard. You know, that's one thing. We're going to be in good shape. And we're going to get after some people this year, and I'm really looking forward to it. Hewitt and the Patriots will begin basketball practice this November. <laughs> and the NMU volleyball team began their season at home, and that's good news. The bad news are hosting third-ranked Minnesota Duluth. First set, Bulldogs lead 3-0. UMD runs a play for Monica Turner, but... Enemy freshman Madison Whitehead softly blocked the kill attempt for the Wildcats' first point of the season. Moments later, the Bulldogs' Ashley Hinch said Sydney Mock for the solid slam. 5-2 Bulldogs. Enemy was keeping pace, but the Bulldogs had a much easier time getting kills. Maria Sharp smacks one off the block. 8-4 UMD. For the Wildcats, Megan Dahl passes. To Stacy Kalsbeek, she connects with Madison Whitehead for the put away 8 to 5 Bulldogs. Now again for NMU, Megan Supple, Kalsbeek to Kayla Choza, she finds the open spot. But Minnesota Duluth won the first set 25-16 and they capture the next two for the 3-0 win over NMU. To some high school volleyball, the Iron Mountain Mountaineers traveled to Nagani to face the Miners. In the first set, it was a game of aces for Iron Mountain. Alina Herman serving, she gets the ace. She's got the hot hand, so why not do it again? These back-to-back -back aces gave Iron Mountain an early 10-8 lead. Now it's Herman serving again. Nagani sets it up this time, and Courtney Klickner on the right gets the kill for the Miners to bring them within one point. However, Iron Mountain just too tough on the court tonight. Now for this particular point, a good rally going on between the two teams. However, all of a sudden, Annie 70 on your left drops the hammer. She gets the kill. Iron Mountain took home the first set 25-18. They take the match 3-0 over Nagani. The Rapid River Rockets open up their season by hosting the North Central Jets first game. Tied at 18 when Rockets senior Rachel Lacoste jumps up and tips this one over for a point. The Jets, though, come back as the ball comes to the middle and Rayanne LaFort stuffs this one back over the net, but Rapid River still won the first game 25-20. This match went all five games. The Rockets won the third game. The Jets took the fourth, and then in the decisive fifth game, North Central was on top 15-7 to win the match three games to two. High school cross country teams from the local areas met at the Kaufman Sport Soccer Fields for the Marquette County Meet. The good news is the smallest school in the county, Republic Michigami, has restarted the sport after a number of years. The boys and girls run simultaneously at this event. The Marquette girls, of course, dominated as Lindsay Rudden, Amber Hubner, and Kayla Mardish were in command. On the boys' side, Nagani's Grant Johnson had a comfortable lead at the two and a half mile mark, even though the wind was strong out of the south. Johnson went on to win a t in a time of 17 minutes, 50 seconds with Miners teammate Colton Yezny second and Marquette's Lance Rambo in third for the girls. It was Lindsay Rudden in 1935, followed by the Hubner sisters, Amber and Shayla. So with their help, it was a sweep for Marquette. The girls come out on top with 15 points, followed by Westwood and Ishpeming in third. As for the boys, it was Marquette in first with 39 points, with Nagani in second and Ishpeming again in third. And highlights, visit our website, UpperMichiganSource.com. And Greg, I know the highlights didn't really come through there, but some bad news, though, for the Packers. Brian Belaga was out in the first half, left knee injury, and Eddie Lacy, fourth quarter, got a concussion. Oh, really so he good. may be out for a little while, too. We'll yeah, see how we, serious it is. Yeah, and it didn't look good there for the, for the run defense there for the Packers, either. 110 Let's, yards, Marshawn Lynch on the ground. Yeah, well, Seattle just picked up right where they left off from the Super Bowl, a dominating performance tonight. Yeah, tricky offense, tricky defense, and it's recipes for success there in Seattle. Yeah, well, it was good to see Michigan Tech win tonight, especially the way they did with that last second field goal. Oh, it was phenomenal. I think we both tuned in at the right. end. We're like, holy moly, can they do it? And they did. Garrett Mead, phenomenal kicker. All right. And NMU plays, is it Saturday? Yes, right. 7 o'clock Saturday at the Superior Dome against Northwood. All right, thanks a lot, Lily. Coming up next, a kayaker takes to the streets of downtown Escanaba. We'll take a look next. <laughs>